Alright, so I've made a few different setups of the uh, scory type mods. <clears throat> and like, here's an example. And like, here's an example. This is one I made with um, audio modulation. But it's just your basic Slayer circuit with a single transistor in there. A little NPN bipolar. And I need to crank that up to about 30 volts, you know, about 24 or so actually, to get pretty, pretty good, impressive, fairly impressive output. Um, so that's your basic setup. And this one right here is an example of another circuit that's being used in these two, for example. And with this particular setup, using this GDT, I got pretty good results using IRFP 250s. Um, so I could basically create another identical circuit to these if I just use 250s and wind another coil like like those. What I have on here now is um, IRF Z44Ns. And those are actually the ones that Tifatronics was using in his circuit. So these have got a much lower gate charge. Um, they're not rated as high in voltage. But I can see now using these why the original circuits had a limit somewhere closer to 12 or 24 volts. So here's an example of an old Slayer exciter I've had for a while. <clears throat> and this is set up to run from about 8 volts or so. And to me this is what I would about expect from 9 volts or so on a, on a Slayer exciter. You know, nothing, nothing crazy basic circuit pull a little bit of plasma so here's another one you know just uses a 9 volt battery little little smaller ferrite deal it's also about what I'd expect from a 9, from a nine volt driven setup you know, a little bit of plasma nothing crazy but now we've got the push pull setup here RF it's giving off is crazy right now, so I really can't move my hand close, but let's see if I'm gonna try and see it flare up there. I'm gonna start pulling close to three amps. Let's see if I can zoom in. So that's nine volts. It's pulling, you know, over two and a half amps, so long as I get it tuned a little better. But you can see how the circuit basically works. Let's do 16 volts, just to show. That is to say, even if you're not going for some comp more complex SST setup, this this basic uh, transistor arrangement with the uh, two primaries like that single turn with the center tab will get you a high output Slayer exciter and um, it'll run down you know this this particular one runs down to about maybe one and a half volts before it won't light uh, fluorescent anymore but it actually does light it up fairly good at only three volts with some decent range and you don't actually have to like hug it to the tower yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. Just wanted to share that. I mean, you know, you build this type of circuit, you know, if you want to run it for long periods, um, throw an interrupter on there. You really don't need to. You can just power it from, you know, 5 to 9 to 12 volts or whatever and get uh, pretty good power out of it. This is the uh, PWM setup I've been using. I don't know how well you can actually see that. I sort of just drew up what I was doing. Um, oh, this over here is sort of kind of ignore that. So I mean, that's just basically how the PWM is set up. You know, you got your drive fit there on the output. <clears throat> this is using the you know regulator. So you can see basically right here is just you've got a, a timing capacitor on pin five, and that should be a low value. Um, the lower the value, the higher the frequency and I've got a switch here which basically just puts a, a 10 microfarad capacitor in parallel with it so it puts 10 microfarad capacitance on pin 5 and with that gives me a variable frequency of you know somewhere you know several hertz to let's say maybe like 60 hertz or something like that so <clears throat> that's how you do that and you just control that with this 
single pot here it could be you know five ten twenty k hundred k really doesn't matter a whole lot um, and then you've got your other one over here which is the duty and that's pretty much it positive input so you see basically it's just one turn primary going one way and another turn primary going another way with a center tap so that's how you get your push pull you've got one transistor powering one primary one turn and the other transistor is powering, powering the other turn I guess L2 the bottom of L2 coming out to one side of the gate drive transformer and the other end of that primary you could say is going to ground and you've got your secondary on the GDT each leg is going out to the gate of one of those fits and that's pretty much it so this setup I'm not I don't have any capacitors it's basically just wired as a regular Slayer exciter using that arrangement same drive circuit about 30 volts the draw right there this meter is not accurate uh, so it's actually a lot less than that um, but it's hooked up the same way with this transformer here is basically you got the uh, you know, 12 to 120 and the 12 primary side has got a center tap or the secondary side rather this is a step down it's got a center tap so center tap is oops that just just shocked me it's not quite a super high frequency so I can still ooh, catch a little something but um it's just got one of the secondary leads here going to the gate drive transformer so it's actually not closed here the uh, one end of the primary on the GDT is just going to the circuit ground so you can see it still works though um, I just have to tune the pot down here but same premise it's just sort of interesting and it's so it's you know it's high voltage um, on this line here it's kinda of hard to see but that's just sort of interesting. I mean, it, it make, makes sense how that works. Even at these lower voltages, it's just uh, shutting my phone off. It keeps cutting off every time I move my hand. So we're at about 6 volts now. See, it's pulling a little over half an amp. And let's see if I can do this. Uh, so it's got pretty decent... So when I put a load on it like this, even then it's pulling about two and a half amps max. You see now we're about two and a two point seven volts, about two hundred and fifty milliamps, and I can still get about an amp out of it by lighting up. So. Still about 9 volts, but you know, I've just dropped the primary down just a tad and pulls about the max current that way. Let me cut it up. See, at 9 volts, pull over 4 amps. Down, let's see, we're about two and a half volts still pulls about an amp with the primary all the way down so I can still get pretty good wireless just off a couple volts that way it's almost hard to show full range gets but This is with the duty all the way up. Yeah, I'm trying to zoom into the power. Anyway, it's, it pulls about an amp max like this. So that's pretty cool. You know, if I wanted to run it, let's say if I bump it back up to 9 volts with this primary location, it's going to pull too much. Uh, you know, but obviously at the lower voltages, it's able to maintain a pretty robust oscillation what I need so if I really wanted to I could drive this setup from like a single uh, you know lithium cell like 4.2 volts or something 
it'll be pretty impressive down to the lower voltages. So that's pretty cool.